Hey guys, I want to do a quick video on the book of Philemon. And um, I used to wonder why the book of Philemon was in the Bible, actually. You know, I wasn't reading it with spiritual glasses, obviously. Um, but I want to go through this and show how this is a picture of salvation through Jesus Christ. Um, and one of the most incredible letters probably ever written when viewed in that uh, sense. So we won't read the entire 25 verses. Um, I'll start with verse 10. Um, but just to set the stage, Onesimus was a servant of his master Philemon and in some form or fashion had wronged him and then fled and deserted him. Uh, Paul finds Onesimus um, after that had happened at some point and won him to Christ, um, had given him the gospel of Jesus Christ and won him to Christ. Um, and now Paul is writing a letter to Philemon to advocate for Onesimus for Philemon to receive him back. And so let's pick this up in verse 10. And this is Paul writing. And it says, I beseech thee for my son, Onesimus, whom I have begotten in my own bonds. And Paul refers to um, many people who he has won to Christ uh, through his evangelism um, as sons who he's begotten in his bonds. And it continues in verse 11, which in time past was to thee unprofitable, but now profitable to thee and to me. So Paul's admitting that, you know, Onesimus hadn't always done the right thing, and actually, he was unprofitable uh, to Philemon. He was a transgressor, a sinner. Um, and it goes on, whom I have sinned again, thou therefore receive him, that is my own bows, whom I would have retained with me, that in thy stead he might have ministered unto me in the bonds of the gospel. But without my, thy mind would I do nothing, that thy benefit should not be as it were of necessity, but willingly. For perhaps he therefore departed for a season that thou shouldest receive him forever. And you see, Paul is advocating, if you receive him, you know, receive him forever. Uh, we can talk about that in a minute too. Uh, and then continue in verse 16. Not now as a servant, but above a servant, a brother beloved, especially to me, but how much more unto thee, both in the flesh and in the Lord. So just quickly looking at that little passage, you know, um, Paul is asking him, you know, don't only receive Onesimus back in your household, uh, but receive him like you would receive me back in your household. And, um, and when you receive him back, not only receive him back like you would receive me, but receive him back like a brother, not like a servant. Um, something's changed. Something's different. Um, and so we can continue, and this is the part that really um, stands out about a picture of salvation through Jesus Christ, and we're starting in 17. If thou count me, and this is Paul speaking uh, in his letter to Philemon, if thou count me therefore a partner, receive him as myself. If he hath wronged thee or oweth thee aught, put that on mine account. I, Paul, have written it with my own hand. I will repay it. Albeit I do not say to thee how thou owest unto me even thine own self besides. Yea, brother, let me have joy of thee in the Lord. Refresh my bowels in the Lord. Having confidence in thy obedience, I wrote unto thee, knowing that thou wilt also do more than I say. But withal prepare me also a lodging, for I trust that through your prayers I shall be given unto you. So here, obviously, um, if we haven't figured it out yet, Paul is a picture of Jesus Christ. Philemon is a picture of the Heavenly Father. And Onesimus is a picture of us, sinful man. And Paul says to receive him as myself. And if he's wronged thee, put it on my account. I'll, I'll repay it. Uh, and this obviously is a picture of Jesus Christ um, paying for our sins, you know. Um, he's the sacrificial lamb, uh, the blood atonement, uh, through faith in him gives us remission of sins. 
Um, he's the redeemer. Um, he's a ransom for many. And this is the perfect picture of that. Um, and we continue to see, you know, there's also this, um, you know, intimate, close brotherly relationship between Paul and Philemon that you see come across in this letter. Um, just like uh, as we read in the book of John, as it goes on uh, later in the book of John uh, 16, 17, 18, those chapters um, that Godhead and how the Godhead um, of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit interact um, in this closeness that we probably can't ever as humans quite grasp, but we can see a picture of that relationship uh, also in this letter. And so, you know, one final point I want to make is that when Onesimus came back to Philemon, he didn't come back and say, you know, I'm sorry, I've turned over a new leaf. You know, I'm a different person now. That's in the past. You know, I'm going to do better and I'm going to be a better servant for you. Um, you know, he didn't do that. Uh, he didn't do anything. You know, he had nothing to stand on. Um, he didn't come back with his own righteousness or goodness or his own merit. He just came back with Paul's letter. And that was it. That was all all that he had um, and that was all he was depending on for Philemon to receive him that letter is a picture of the Word of God Jesus Christ um, that's what Onesimus had placed his faith in he has placed his faith in the person of Paul and then the words of Paul's letter just like we place our faith in Jesus Christ the Word of God. When we see Scripture, we see Jesus Christ, who is the Word. Um, you know, and and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And so, this is a great picture of um, faith alone, and not of works of righteousness um, that we have done. It's not of ourselves. It's simply trusting in our Savior Jesus Christ for eternal life and to be our intercessor, our advocate uh, to the Father. Uh, and we also see, you know, that once the Heavenly Father receives us, He should us receive us forever, as it says. That's what Paul's letter uh, wrote. That's what Jesus Christ says. Uh, eternal life means eternal life. Um, you know, we're kept by the power of God. It's not of ourselves. Um, you know, he will no wise cast us out. Um, you know, no man pluck him from Jesus' hand or the Heavenly Father's hand. And, you know, Paul mentions also, we didn't cover um, three times in the Bible, the phrase, I'm a prisoner of Jesus Christ, or Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ. Um, he writes that in um, Ephesians 3.1. But the other two times he writes it in the book of Philemon, in, in the first verse and the ninth verse, I think that's a great picture of eternal security. That's a type of prisoner we want to be. Uh, we want to be a prisoner of Jesus Christ. Um, because once we are in Christ and sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise, um, that is what um, gives us eternal life. And, um, you know, we can rest in him, you know, as he asks us to, he's our Sabbath. We rest in his finished work, his righteousness. That's what we get. We get his righteousness. You know, that's what Onesimus was trusting. He was trusting in the righteousness of Paul and the relationship that he had with Philemon to get him back into good graces. And you know, that's all he was depending on was Philemon's grace and mercy. And that's all we depend on for salvation. So uh, what a great book. Um, I'm sure there's a lot more spiritual truths in there that we probably didn't cover. Um, but again, what a great example of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, God bless.